Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. It's time for yet another Kingdom Death unboxing. This is the Holiday Lucy set. At least I think it was called Holiday Lucy. Sorry, I'm wrong. Winter Solstice Lucy. So Lucy has had quite a few different versions now. Not as many as Aya, I think, but she's getting up there. And I like the fact that we actually have the full entire figure for the pinup because this is another one of those dual kits where you have both a 54 millimeter pinup model and then a 32 millimeter size gaming model but it's actually the full model rather than in some kind of weird pose sitting on stuff climbing out of chimneys anything like that it's just the figure itself so i'm kind of curious to see how all of that turns out oh wow okay cool this is always one of the nice things about these bigger box sets is you get all kinds of goodies stuffed in there, but do keep in mind that that is just a big, thick piece of cardboard backing, keeping everything on there. So it looks like we have a Grim Muffler pattern card. Can I get this open? Give me a sec. Yeah, okay. So you got your pattern gear. You've got your actual pattern here. And then we've got the typical art postcard as well. Okay, what do we got in the bag itself? This is going to unfortunately have to tide me over until we actually see those pinups of death get released from customs. Who knows when that's going to be? Okay, as I said, you've got the bases for both versions, and it looks like, oh, we do have a nice custom base for the 54mm one. You can see the body right here. It looks to be part of her hair or her cloak. That's her hair. There's her cloak. Wait, no, you know what? That must be the gaming size one, because then there's this giant leg right here. Along with a giant head. Okay, cool. I stand corrected. So they are labeled, if you look closely, you see how everything, the A's are going to be your large scale pinup parts. And then the B's are going to be, it's a very bloody ax there. The B's are going to be the gaming sized stuff. So they should still have pictures somewhere online. I was actually trying to figure out what she looked like because I had forgotten after purchasing her and was curious to see what I got myself into. Interesting, you can see the actual like pupils of the eyes there. So, they're actually molded on rather than just waiting for you to paint them. So, quite a few parts, at least for the large scale pinup. At least 32 parts, that's not bad. I like that though. I know sometimes I can complain about the multitude of pieces for kits like Kingdom Death models and Malifaux stuff, but I like when it's a complex build, not necessarily teeny tiny little easily breakable bits like those doodads hanging off of her cloak right here. That's going to be fun. Looks to be about 12 parts for the gaming size one. That's doable. That's uh, definitely doable. I think this one, I might actually take a shot at painting the pinup model myself. So, looks like it'll be a fun one. I'm going to get both of these ladies put together. So sit tight and we will see just how they turn out. And of course, I'll go grab a bunch of other Kingdom Death stuff as well. All right, guys, we've got Winter Solstice Lucy in both forms finished. Why don't we start with the gaming sized one? So this model frustrated me quite a bit. And let me explain why. First of all, you'll see her face is a mess. I'm gonna have to clean that up some more. Uh, her head did not want to fit on that neck. It just did not want to cooperate. I don't know what it is. And I mean, I put everything together, nice, tight, smooth, cut down, flush, it did not want to connect. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But there was a huge gap. I tried to fill it and it just made a bigger mess. I'm not happy about that at all. A couple of things that need to be mentioned. The right arm that the axe attaches to is actually mislabeled on the sprue. It should be part B12. It's labeled A12. And I was in a panic, worried that I'd lost a part. I'm counting everything on the sprue. And I'm like, I don't see it. And I saw, okay. So, yeah. Just be aware of that. I also 
could not figure out for sure where those hands for her headdress were supposed to go. So I had to play around with that for a bit. And I think I got it all figured out. The ribbon thingy here actually wasn't too bad. There's a little sliver on both the front and the back of her skirt that it just slots into and then they connect together. You can also see there's some significant mold lines on those legs and on the hips and the waist that I still need to clean up. So be aware of that. Otherwise, I gotta say, the pieces all fit together really smoothly and easy, and I really dug the look. I'm just really not happy with what happened with her neck. And maybe it was just me. Let's hope it's just me, because I would hate to have other people ruin their models. So, anyway. Let's take a look. Here is the base for the pinup model. I haven't even actually tried putting it on a base. I should say base topper. Lots of weird eggs, lots of mold lines. Still need to clean some of those up. Not 100% which way she's actually supposed to stand on this base, believe it or not. I'm pretty sure anyway. Let's take a look at the actual model. So, the first thing I really like the fact, other than the weird thing that they actually put in the pupils, that was a new one, and again, mold lines, I thought I cleaned them, but I guess I did not do as nice of a job as I thought. Uh, everything actually went together pretty smoothly. The contact points for whatever she's holding here in her hand are very, very thin, so I cheated and just glued it on at her hip as well to keep things a little bit more sturdy and stable. You can see, unfortunately, there was a little bit of pitting where the contact points of the sprue had to be removed. Same thing with the smaller model's ribbon. There's a little notch on both sides of her hips and then it just connects together so it was pretty easy i gotta say for the only real challenge i thought was just making sure which way the lantern spikes were supposed to face that was about it honestly i thought everything fit pretty smoothly her cape is definitely going to need some gaps filled there's some pretty obvious seams there but otherwise she's pretty sturdy and i mean she's got a good heft to her Pretty solid model, and I like that. I'm pretty sure she's supposed to stand kind of like so. And I think I'm probably going to actually paint this pinup myself. I know I've painted a few, and I know I've had my dad paint a few, but I like the fact, like I said, this is the first one that I can really recall where they're actually standing completely upright. I know, like with Oktoberfest Aya, she's kind of sitting still on the broken beer barrel, and a lot of the other ones are in various compromised positions, but... Yeah, I think she's the first one that's actually fully standing up, so interesting. But since she's kind of a pinup rather than an actual gaming piece, we'll just kind of set her in the background here and focus on the foreground with our Winter Solstice Lucy. Grabbing a couple other Lucys I've got handy. We've got our original OG one here on the left side, and then the 10th anniversary one on the right. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go with any kind of fancy base for her. But then again, I grabbed a couple other seasonal models, just to give you guys a good idea. And they didn't either. Here we have gaming-sized Oktoberfest Aya, Halloween Satan, and our Valentine Twilight Night. Who's still one of the biggest ones. But yeah, they're in good company. I like the fact that, you know, for as voluptuous and teasing as the big scale pinups are i like the fact that their gaming equivalents are much more sedate in their clothing choices i mean they're still you know kingdom death and very scantily clad but at least it's more in line with the other survivors so i'm pretty happy with her i hope i can get that ma neck area cleaned up and in case you guys are curious if you've never seen and i know i've shown these quite a few times before but it goes without saying that Kingdom Death models are a little bit larger than your average figure. So if you were going to pick some of these up for whatever tabletop purposes, they do run quite a bit larger. In fact, I'd say they're closer to some of the 3D printed stuff, and even then, they're still quite large. I think Malifaux would be a better choice, but again, still pretty darn big. Um... Yeah, they're still too big. Maybe with like Arena Rex. I think we're hitting closer to home, but yeah, he's a big dude anyway. So, there you have it. In case you are curious what the 
winter solstice Lucy is like. Again, I don't think there's any real issues putting the larger one together. In fact, I don't really think there's any issues at all other than just the weird issue I had with getting that neck connected correctly. And I really don't know what the problem was. It was an interesting connection in that you have to basically, this hand with the ax has to get glued on because then this hand is holding that there and then you're gonna have to attach the head or at least the hair, the back part of the hair, and then the left side of the cape. It, it just, it, I kind of just put all the pieces on at once like a puzzle. It was entertaining, to say the least. So hopefully I can get started on these two ladies, and hopefully they will tide me over until we have good news that bears tidings of the pinup models arriving sometime soon in the U.S. Fingers crossed. So, hopefully if you see this and you want it, and she's not on the store, do not fear, because I'm sure she'll be back next winter solstice. We'll put a link down below, as always, just in case, and hopefully, maybe you'll find something that you like as well. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamburlaine with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.